This is another one of my little steamers called Peggy, used on the Ashover Light Railway in Derbyshire. Uh, these were built during the First World War by the American locomotive company Baldwin for the British Armed Forces and Trench Warfare. And of course they built way too many of them and therefore there were lots of cheap ones uh, after the war to supply to little railways that couldn't afford to build new ones. Anyway, this is a Wright scale model designed by Malcolm Wright and um, I went over to Britain to film um, a, uh, a series for television about great chefs on trains around the world and I managed to sneak Malcolm onto one of my films um, building his locomotives up in Scotland. Here's the clip from my series Dinner on the Diner. This is the section with Malcolm Wright and the voiceover is Graham Kerr. In the Aboyne Valley, a few miles from the distillery, trains stopped running in 1965, except for one place, Burnside. Here at the home of Malcolm Wright, the trains run still, around and around his lovely garden. Well, I'm Malcolm Wright, and we came up to Scotland seven years ago now to set up a business and work for ourselves, making model steam locomotives. These miniatures sell for thousands of dollars. Something that people don't realise, that in a mechanical model, there's a lot of art. Often, if you make, an, say, a chimney of a locomotive to the design, it doesn't look a bit like a photograph, so you have to be aware and look and think what's wrong. So often there's a sort of touch with a file to make the thing look just right. There's a sort of strange nostalgia in it. One imagines what the thing would have looked like long ago and somehow the model has got to capture that. Um, I'm always being criticised by the, the partner in the business for sort of... Uh, seeing heart and soul rather than pound notes. But I think if you did just see pound notes, the product wouldn't be as good. So these engines are proper steam locomotives. Uh, they are driven by steam. They operate using gas as a fuel, the same gas you'd use in a gas lighter. Turning on the gas, the burner starts heating the water, and after five or ten minutes, you can connect the engine up to a train and off it chuffs around the garden. I've sold models to drivers on the London Underground, dustmen, dentists, foresters working in Papua New Guinea. Well, you name it, I've sold them. The common theme, though, is they are invariably men, and they are usually over the age of about 30. And as a consequence of that, I bought off him a sort of flat pack of parts to build this locomotive. The locomotive is uh, sort of etched. These are, the tanks are etched. The, uh, the frames and the valve gear are all um, uh, laser cut. Wheels are cast brass, cylinders are cast, copper boiler, etc. And um, so I built this up. It's a very fiddly model to build, I must say. Um, the valve gear wasn't, the geometry of the valve gear wasn't quite right. I had to alter that. I had to alter the, um, the length of this, um, the eccentric rod here. I had to alter the um, eccentric here. I had to make that a little bit smaller. Um, all to uh, make the thing go backwards and forwards equally. I wasn't getting equal admission. One of the things Malcolm told me I hadn't done properly was put this, um, the frame in here, the, uh, um, what's it called, the motion frame, in here properly. And uh, what I found was it was lozenge shape, and I cut it and made it square and then placed it in, and that might have thrown some of the geometry out, but not all of it, not as far as I could see. The, uh, the model is radio controlled, um, has really sweet parts to it. It's very accurate. It's, it's a much nicer engine, I feel, than the um, AccuCraft engine that I've seen that was built similarly of the same model locomotive, same prototype locomotive. 
Um, this is more finely scaled, valve gears finer. Um, I'll just give you a quick uh, rotate round. Um, if you look inside the cab here, you've got a regulator which is operated by a servo up here. You've got a sight glass here. Um, the battery is also in the cab roof. I don't think I can get to that. Oh yeah, you can just about see it there. It's in the cab roof. Up there, pretty tight. Get it all in. Pretty difficult to get it all in there, but it did go in. I could paint that, um, that operating arm black. It would um, make it a little bit more, a little less, I should say, a little less obvious. Um, Going around here, you can see the pressure gauge there in the cab. You can see some sort of fake controls too. The uh, you can see the here, the brake lever, which was a strange brake lever on the prototype that went across the top of the boiler to a nut and a hasp here to pull the brakes on. Um, What's cool about this is that the um, the safety valves inside here. You pull that off, and inside there is a safety valve, um, which you can get at with a uh, box spanner. You can see that he's really Malcolm really detailed this model and thought about this model uh, very well. That's the sand dome there. Um, if you look inside the smoke box, it's a heavy model too. Just pull it off. If I pull it around here a bit, you can see now inside the smoke box it's got a um, the um, the main steam pipe coming in here. This is the main steam pipe here. The exhaust pipe, the background there. You can see the single flue um, uh, gas-fired boiler there. Uh, one of the things that's missing from this as an Ashover engine is that um, towards the end of their days on Ashover, between the tanks here and here, they had um, a balance pipe. I, ha I haven't put that in yet. Um, they had a balance pipe between the tanks. One of the problems with these engines was that they, they have a balance pipe halfway down the tank which you can see here. You can, maybe I'll see underneath there. You can see it going across underneath there in this place here. You can see it going across there. Wasn't big enough. And so what would happen would be that the, uh, the tanks on one side would empty and the engine would actually tip right over onto its side, causing a little bit of embarrassment. Uh, so they put a bigger balance pipe between the two tanks here, and I haven't put that balance pipe in. I probably will at some stage or other. Another thing you can see, actually, let me just show you the underneath of this model. Again, another cool design of Malcolm's was the um, the front bogey here. It's uh, it's actually got side control springs on this part of it, so that it does help going around corners. It's it's balanced in the middle there. It's on a spring in the middle, on the middle pinion, but it has two side control springs on it. Um, now, what he also did, as per the prototype, but it was a mistake on the model, I think, is that center driving wheel is flangeless. And uh, actually, it did have a flange on it. He recommended machining the flange off to make it prototypical. Problem is that that uh, wheel drops down between the rails on on curves or slightly uneven curves. It's, uh, it won't go around anything less than a nine foot radius curve without that sensor driving wheel dropping down between the rails, which isn't very funny. Um, I put the, I would not have machined the flange off it if I'd known. The other thing is, is I fitted a whistle. It's painted black. It's really deep down inside here. There's a whistle here that runs the length of the frames. And at the back end here, you've got a nice little complication of pipe work. You've got the, um, the, the gas valve coming off the gas tank. 
You've got the um, the valve here, which is a, um, a drain cock from a, uh, a much bigger locomotive. I use that as a valve for the whistle, for blowing the whistle. That's attached to uh, radio control motors, servo motors in the bunker here. Um, this here is the, um, the water fill valve. A lot of the other piping you see, this piping running up here, is actually just decorative. It's just to give you an idea of the prototype piping. This here, this doesn't actually do anything for the model. It's just a prototype. This here too, this is a feed to the injector in the cab. This here was a, um, it was a water fill system for the tanks so that you could fill them from puddles and streams. Whatever they were passing on the way, when it was trench warfare, they removed that, they removed the back, they had the hose wrapped up at the back bunker here, but they removed that on some of the Ashover engines. Coming around here to the back end again. Uh, inside the bunker here are um, two servos. Let's take a look, let's see if we can get inside here and take a look. Yeah, I've got everything in the back here. I've got two servos. You've got the gas valve here. I've got the aerial. I've got the receiver. And I've got the um, servo for the reverser. And I've got the servo for the whistle in here. And I've got the third servo, if you remember, up in the roof here for operating the, um, the throttle here. The, uh, the lubricator is quite interestingly placed here in the side tank um, you just unscrew that screw and inside what's called a dead leg lubricator which means that you need a syringe to empty the moisture out of the bottom of it also to get it to work properly takes a little bit of fiddling around with and then on the other side here is the um, the gas fill got a gas tank in it uh, here what you have to be careful with is, uh, because this tank's a lot heavier, because it's almost completely filled with gas. This other side here is fairly empty, just with the dead leg lubricator. It means that the um, you've got to put lead uh, lead shot, or um, I, put, I use um, the lead weights from um, balancing tires on car wheels. I put a whole bunch of lead weight in there and balance the two out. You can see the reversing lever, and that's attached with this rod here to the servo in the bunker. You can see it operating the uh, in the expansion link there. The other thing with it, it's probably my fault too, is it's uh, it's pretty lively. As steam engines go, I'll just get this face back on. It has a tendency to wobble. It's quite lively as it goes around the track. It gives it a lot of character, actually. Um, it hasn't wobbled off yet and fallen on its side, thank goodness. Um, and I don't think it's going to. It seems rather stable, even though it looks wobbly on the track. And you'll see that when it runs around. So I think that covers all the bases. Just give it a little bit of run under compressed air. See how smoothly it goes. And then in reverse gear. super little engine, lots of character in it. Um, it does not run like a roundhouse engine. It takes uh, a little bit more skill than that to keep it going. The boiler is actually quite small so you have to be on top of feeding water into the water valve here so the boiler doesn't run dry. Other than that, I love the engine. It's a fantastic one. Thanks Malcolm.